Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play Demon Souls Remade by Bluepoint on the PlayStation 5. Regulars to the channel will already know this, but Demon Souls is a game that's very near and dear to me. Not just because of how incredible it is, or because one of my all-time favorite series and games followed from the foundation this game built, but also because eight years ago, I did a video series for the original release of Demon's Souls. And it was my love letter to the game. It, I, I poured over the details and just appreciated the sheer craft that went into the game. Uh, that playthrough blew up, continues to be one of the biggest things on the channel. And I am superlatively grateful that so many people found so much to like about that. And now I get to go on a similar journey again, but all these years later, with all these years of experience, and I get to see something that was old as new again. So I hope this playthrough is even better. So that the honorable name <laughs> of the Order of the Pantsless Knights may live on in posterity. Free yourself from the oppressive shackles of pants. So what is this going to be? Uh, this is going to be a full Platinum Trophy run, including um, all of the, the World Tendency events, all of the side quests, all of the secrets. So, more or less a 100% run through of Demon Souls. Uh, I'm going to be going in depth and talking about a lot of things from the lore to the development to secrets and small details. And before this video is done, you will see a secret. It's been 12 years since the game came out, so it's a pretty well-documented one at this point, but it's still rad. Uh, and there is another secret, one unique to this version of the game, that we will see before this Let's Play is over as well. We are going to dig into this, and there is a lot to dig into. Demon's Souls is dense with mechanics and details and everything, really. So, there's going to be plenty of highlight throughout the series. We're going to ease our way in, though. Uh, so starting with character creation, we're going to make this quick. There are just a few things to really note here. One is your starting class. Your starting class doesn't actually matter very much in the long term, or even in the mid to long term, uh, because you can allocate your, your stat points however you want and use whatever weapon or uh, spells you want. So this is just what you'll begin the game with. If you want the maximum amount of build flexibility, uh, pick a royal because they start off at level 1. Also pick a royal if you're finding melee combat in this to be too hard, because the royal starts off with some really powerful magic and ways to sustain its mana pool. And then the other thing is the starting gift. It's just a nice little boon that you get to start the game with. Uh, just a, a kind of helpful item to give you a boost early on. King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. the old King Alant had roused the Old One, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force, and the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fisher to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. Bjor of the Twin Fangs. 
Yet the silent chief. Saint Urbain. Skurva the Wanderer. The sixth Saint Astria with her knight Garl Vinland. And Sage Freak the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog. Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you to the fissure. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Finally, finally we are in there. Oh, and it's gorgeous. I, I love how there's even that a uh, prismatic shimmery effect off the water. Oh, this is so beautiful. By the way, this is going to be my first time getting to see this remake in person outside of like gifts and a few of the trailers. Oh my god, it's also going to be my first time getting to play with this good good role too. So for context, Demon Souls and the first Dark Souls uh, used four directional rolls, so you can only roll in cardinal directions in those games. Uh, from Dark Souls 2 onward, rolls became omnidirectional, which feels much, much better. Demon Souls didn't have them, the remake does. Uh, so as for basics, this uses what at the time was a novel control scheme. Uh, so you lock onto an enemy, you can roll around to dodge, your dodge has iframes. R1 and R2 are for light and heavy attacks, respectively, and then L1 to block, L2 to parry. And all of this is tied to that green gauge in the top left. That is your stamina. If you run out of stamina, you're going to be extremely vulnerable. So a large part of the game is about managing that while fighting. Each of these things is a lot more depth that we'll go into as we go along. That's a good starting point, though. Uh, also, for example, this game uses uh, this moment to teach you about blocking. Well, look at that. Uh, I, since I mentioned parrying earlier, I tried to parry, but mistimed it. But I didn't take much damage. Uh, in fact, I took almost the same amount of damage as if I had just blocked it. Ooh, that's a really nice way to start us off. Um, so yeah, if you miss time a parry, it actually acts as a partial block as long as the shield makes contact with the attack. So it mitigates some of the risk uh, inherent to parrying. You aren't completely screwed if you miss time something uh, that otherwise has a fairly precise timing window to it. And that Crescent Moongrass that we just picked up is going to act as one of our major curatives for the playthrough. Uh, different denominations of grass all have more and more potent healing properties. And I also regret to inform you that Blue Point has made the grass heavy. <laughs> oh my god, I'm enjoying these vistas so much. Oh wait, hold on. So... Hold circle to vault over railings while pressing forward. This is such an odd little quirk of Demon Souls. Uh, because you see, Dark Souls 1 had a really wonky jump that required you to start sprinting and then you would tap the sprint button again mid-sprint. And it wasn't great and it didn't improve that much over the course of the series. Or even Bloodborne. Uh, they eventually added an alternate button that you can hit to trigger the jump, but it's still not great. And then in Sekiro, they were just, they, they just finally gave you a jump button. Demon Souls has none of that. Instead, it has that really peculiar vault. 
which is it only works on extremely extremely specific ledges there are so few of them in the game that you could be forgiven for playing through it and forgetting that that mechanic exists i can't believe how good this looks like it's the lighting more than anything and the fact that oh my god it's demon souls and it's running it 60 fps and it looks good <laughs> uh, and now we're going to see another cool little quirk of the tutorial area uh so this is the point in the game where uh, the point in the tutorial where they want to teach you about parrying and you know something that makes it even easier to learn parrying? The fact that you can't die in the tutorial. So you can just sit here and practice your parries and get that timing right down into your into the bones of your digits for as long as you want. Also, that's a really, really nice animation. Uh, I saw a few of the new parry animations they added and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. But, ooh, it feels quite good. Shit, this lighting. Oh, this lighting is gorgeous. Demon Souls is never what I would have considered a, a very pretty game. <laughs> but now, look at it. The glow up of it. Oh, right. We also have a, a weapon that we can equip in our left hand and switch to on the fly. This is our dagger. This is the last time we're going to see that dagger. Dagger heavy. It didn't set me over the weight threshold that I'm trying to meet, but I, I have no point for it. I have no use for it. We do not equip the useless things. And it's also worth just exploring the tutorial area so you don't miss too much. There are a couple of... There's actually quite a bit of grass that you can miss here. And it's always worth keeping as much... As many healing items on hand as possible. Especially if you're just playing this through for the very first time. I know I keep beating this drum, and I'm going to sound like a broken record before the end of this Let's Play, but holy shit, the lighting. The lighting especially. Holy shit. Alright, so I'm going to finally heal up, uh, because there is one very big exception to the whole you can't die in the tutorial thing, and it's right here. Vanguard Demon. Wow. Lighting, lighting, lighting. <laughs> I would wager that most people fight Vanguard Demon for the very first time and think, oh, I'm supposed to die here. Because uh, he too shot you really easily. Uh, and he doesn't take that much damage from your puny start of the game weapon. He is designed to kill you. Because the game does progress if you die to this boss. Uh, and you don't get another crack at doing this. But, as you can see, despite the fact that he can two-shot you really easily, he's very beatable. The trick is just knowing... Well, the trick to every uh, large Souls boss, especially the earlier era ones, ride that butt. Find yourself a slice of cake and attach yourself to it. Uh, that would be the cake slam. The cake slam a jamma. Because his turning radius is just so low that it's difficult for him to keep up with you, and all of his attacks, they mostly cover like a 180 degree 
radius in front of him with a little bit of reach behind. But for the most part, that butt is where you want to be. And of course, even if you do find yourself in a little bit of trouble, it's easy enough to just use the iframes of the dodge to roll through his attacks. Uh, something if you're new to Souls games that you should probably get into the habit of doing is rolling into attacks or rolling against them. You want to minimize the amount of time that the active uh, hitbox of the attack is going to be overlapping with your character's hurtbox or vice versa. I always get them mixed up. This is not a very descriptive item. It's Soul of a Vanguard Demon. We can use it to do stuff later. Rolling backwards tends to get you hit more often than not, and this unknown egress is our reward for beating the boss who guards the tutorial. Our reward is this angry dude who we saw in that opening cinematic. He is the Dragon God. And if you look down here... Oh, he's got that fist cocked back. He's spoiling for a fight. But look at all the stuff that we're getting. Oh wait, I think I know who this- I never noticed this before. I think I know who that is. Oh, cool. I definitely have never noticed that before. There are going to be so many new details I pick up on in this playthrough. Just the sheer fidelity of how this game looks. Go back and look at Demon Souls running at 20 FPS and still being a little bit fugly. Whew. We have come a long way. All right, let's give the Dragon God a fight. I think that went well. So unlike the Vanguard Demon, there is no getting past Dragon God. Withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the lost, withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. You have died and the Nexus has imprisoned your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your corporeal body. And we have a brand new item, the Next Seal Binding. The mark of those imprisoned by the Nexus. The bearer of the seal is bound to the Nexus, never to be free, even in death. When the body is lost, the soul remains trapped. Next Seal Bindings return the servant to the Nexus, but alas, without any souls collected. Uh, souls serve as both your currency and your experience points. Oh, man. Just the, how ornate every detail is is breathtaking. By the way, this is also my first PS5 game, so it's having the knock-on effect of just being extra uh, breathtaking. Holy shit. 
Holy shit, I'm gonna have such a wild time with this game's photo mode. Uh, let's take a step into these real quick. These are all developer messages that they leave behind as little tutorials. Um, there's one in here that touches on something that I want to get back to. One of the ways in which Demon Souls... Yeah, here it is. When you're in soul form, your HP is halved. That's one way in which this game's pretty punishing. Um, that's also what they mean about killing a demon to restore your corporeal form, your body form, along with your uncapped max health. You have to beat a boss to do that. Hmm, you new here. Are you here for my services? The name's Baldwin. I'm just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, eh? And if you haven't heard, there's another blacksmith at the entrance to Stone Fang Mine. He's an eccentric old man. He knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul-starved men. If you do meet him... No, forget it. That stubborn old Nidibel will just chase you off. There aren't enough smithing tools in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain ores can be used to forge weapons, but you'll just have to make do. And be thankful that I can do anything for you at all in this forsaken place. And be thankful that I can do anything. No interest, eh? All right, so that's Baldwin the Blacksmith. No, I think his function's here. pretty straightforward. Let's talk to everyone's favorite character. I'm Stockpile Thomas. When the scuds came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here, in this nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. When the scourge came, I abandoned my wife and daughter and fled like a coward. When I came to, I was in this nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more, but <laughs> I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. That candle maiden cared for me during my first days here. She says very little, but has a kind heart. She's just the age my young daughter would have been. Poor, poor girl, trapped here with her eyes occluded by wax. If only something could be done to help her. If only something could be done to help her. Stockpile, Thomas. Oh, that poor soft boy. God damn. Oh my, how has this happened? Has God abandoned us for King Alant? Failing to show proper respect? Oh, Mbasa. Oh, Mbasa. Okay, that's all she has to say for now. And there's only one character left to talk to, for the time being. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the arch stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed Politaria? 
You came for demon souls? Bah, it's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here. As long as we keep slashing up demons. You came for Dima. So for the time being, the Nexus is actually pretty barren and parts of it are locked off to us still. So we're going to take uh, the Crestfallen Blue Phantom's advice and head into the first level of Bulletaria Castle. World 1-1 of the Archstone of the Covetous King. A huge stone castle in the heart of the northern kingdom of Bulletaria. Hungry soldiers attack trespassers, their souls stolen by demons, while nearby... Terrible dragons have taken roost. By the way, the Crestfallen Blue Phantom is a recurring thing in From Games, like some other people and things that we'll come across. The scope and the grandeur of this really hits now. Oh my god. I'm so impressed by the job that Blue Point has done. So, let's take this in. Boletaria Castle lies before us. And before we even start our journey towards that big door... Uh, let's actually look off in the distance and take note of a few things, like all the little battlements and ramps honeycombing the wall, and then this ornate cathedral up here. And these are just really cool, beautiful vistas painted onto a skybox or whatever. They're actual places that we're going to visit, and I can't emphasize enough how cool that actually is, and how much... That gives the level a, a coherent sense of internally consistent geography. It makes it feel so much more like a real place that you're exploring and not just a level. Uh, this is a gate that we can't get past just yet. We will have to come back for that much, much later. The levels in this game are designed with so much care and attention. Uh, and even though we can't get past the gate, we can kind of peer down to what lies beyond it. Uh, those are the execution grounds. And again, since this is a basically a 100%, we will be going back for that. No doubt at all. And we'll deal with you really quick before the others come in. Ooh, hello. I got caught by the flailing attack, which is historically the most dangerous thing that these uh, grunt level enemies do. They are not dangerous until, until they start whipping their arms around wildly. <laughs> Damn, even the even the embers on the palisade look really good, and this giant doorway uh, is going to be our main objective of the level. The boss is just behind there, teasing you right from the beginning. And there's clearly something on the other side of that gate. Again, nothing that we can really interact with yet. Oh, I got unlucky. Not only did neither of them drop their dumb asses into the pit, as their AI is wont to do, they both hit me with the plunging attack. Damn. Uh, I rushed up to the platform because I figured it was easier to deal with the arrow guy first. 
Now, this is very clearly a death pit. However, if we look far enough down into the pit, we can clearly see that there are things that you can obtain down here. It is a place that is accessible. Yeah, good message. Bad time for falling down. Uh, there are two genres of message that show up by that pit. Helpful ones and ones that I like. <laughs> Cause, come on. You come up to the pit and you think, you know, this seems too obvious. The video game thing to do would be to hide a secret down here. And then you have people egging that on by leaving messages that say, try jumping. And it's the best. Because you jump in the pit and you die. <laughs> and I think that's one that's the very, that's a very Demon Souls experience is being trolled by messages left at another time uh, in another place by another player. It's just a rite of passage. It's so good. Uh, now we are going to dodge under some firebombs raining down from above as we collect a couple of eh, pretty inconsequential items. We have a mail breaker in there, a new weapon, nothing to write home about. Uh, uh, -oh. uh, that is something else that you have to watch out for in Demon Souls if you fight in tight spaces. Uh, it, your weapon is very... Oops, almost got caught by you. It's very prone uh, to glancing off of walls. Hello? He tried to lead me. That's pretty advanced for their AI. I can't say enough bad things about how, how dumb the 1-1 enemies usually are. They're feeling a little bit spicy today. Uh, so we're going through this bit really quickly. We'll uh, we'll take a pause and take the surroundings in in just a moment. I just want to make sure I'm out of danger first and that we have all this cleared. We're going to be doubling back for a few things anyway. Like this. We saw it before, couldn't get up to it. Now we're over it and still can't do anything, but... Demon Souls will punish you for rushing into things. It will punish you for not paying attention. It will pay, it will punish you for bad situational awareness. Always keep an eye out for ambushes and traps. We've already run into a few attempts that should tell you everything you need to know. Also, look at that. We are so close to that cathedral now. And our landmarks, our points of reference in the in the geography of this level, of this landscape, are all internally consistent. In fact, the cathedral is now over on the left, and we are just about there. Unlucky, I got a crossbow bolt to the gut just before I landed that attack. Uh, so now we're going to bait this dude out and try to roll around his spear. Ah, it was a little bit too early. Because we want to deal with the crossbowman first before we go fighting this dude one on one. Oh, that's actually really nice. Hello. Oh, I glanced off the wall and that gave him a chance to retaliate. Okay. Good shit. Oh, this feels so much. This feels so much smoother now that the roll is omnidirectional. And so, again, we have our starting point down there, and the cathedral. Oh, that stained glass is gorgeous. Mm. And then, if you look right off in the distance, you could see something else. Hold on, hold on. I'll, uh, I'll zoom and enhance. Oh, it's the names of all my patrons who so generously and graciously support me on patreon.com slash scribe. Uh, for $10 or more a month. Look, there's... <laughs> Look, there's Victor T, Absinthe Miasma, Sad Salad Dressing, Evan, Kyle, Brenton Buchanan, Chris Mixner-Croft, 
LLC, Sabella Fionla? Mm, not sure that I said that right. Syndra Lynn Ockerblom, Tequit, Wolfman 500, and Cal. As a reminder, I'd love to have your support, and I'd be supremely grateful for it, but I know not everyone is in a comfortable uh, position to go giving their hard-earned limited money away, so donating to a YouTuber or a YouTuber's Patreon should be, like, the very last thing on your list of priorities to spend that money on. Okay, calls to action. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the YouTube meta by now. Please go forth and appease the algorithm so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.